current theme is variational Bayes phylogenetic inference, and we'll have a series of three talks on that topic. So we're trying out new streaming software because Hangouts on Air is no more. So please let me know on Twitter or via the comment box on YouTube if you're having problems. Please also use those means to ask any questions you might have. Today's speaker is Matthew Formont. Matthew has worked on many important topics, but is now fo focusing on Bayesian phylogenetic inference. He's originally from France, where he did his undergraduate and master's, and then he did a master's in Glasgow and a PhD at Macquarie University in Australia. Since that time, he's worked in a number of interesting places, including Cambodia, Sergei Kosakovsky Pond's lab in UC San Diego, Singapore, and now in Sydney, where he recently got a permanent position. On a personal note, Matthew has been a wonderful collaborator who thinks hard and codes like a maniac. Welcome, Matthew, and thanks for being willing to speak. Well, thanks, Eric, for inviting me and uh, for the nice introduction. Um, I'm happy to present my work on the Farlow seminar series. And today, my talk is going to be about variational inference. And uh, the next two follow seminar talks will, will also be on, on uh, variational inference. But they will have a different angle and different models. So, so it will be very interesting. So what we want to do is post our estima estimation in phylogenetics. You, usually, we do this using Markov chain Monte Carlo. Uh, so that's the most widely used technique. Um, all the, Software like Mr. Bayes, Beast, Fallow Bayes, Red Bayes, they all use some kind of a MCMC algorithm. But one of the problems with the MCMC is that it can take a long time to, to compute for large data sets. And for more than 10,000 sequences, for example, it becomes almost impossible to, uh, to run. Uh, it's not just the number of sequences, but also the number of, of sites in the alignments. We also have a lot of whole genome uh, alignments now. So that, that's a big problem. So, so the question is, can we use another poster inference method that would scale to big data sets? And uh, the hint here is that maybe it's variational inference, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. Without going too much into details, um, variational inference involve approximating a complex distribution using a, a simpler distribution. So this concept is not new. Some, pay, some people in phylogenetics have touched the problem. And uh, they've been using approximate distributions uh, to, to approximate some kind of distribution. <laughs> so for example, Abera and his colleagues, they use the parametric distribution to approximate the con conditional posterior distribution of a single branch length. And then Clewell and uh, his colleagues, uh, they used a specialized surrogate function instead of a parametric distribution. And again, to approximate one single branch length at a time. So uh, about approximating the condition distribution of one branch length, uh, that's from Aber and his colleagues still. Uh, so they use a branch, um, they use a parametric distribution. And the goal is to improve sampling the sampling of the street space using an independent sampler. So the, the idea here is to use um, a special uh, proposal distribution, which is the parametric distribution in, in this case. So to, so to fit the parametric distribution to the branch length distribution, we need the maximum likelihood estimate of the branch and also the second derivative. And uh, also, the, maxim the goal is to maximize the acceptance rate of the MC proposal. So they don't want to be restricted to the 25% acceptance rate. They want to get as close as possible to 100%. So from their paper, we've got four plots here. Um, uh, each plot represents one branch. Uh, they, have, they can have different branch length. So the histogram is uh, the posterior distribution estimated from an MCMC for a single branch. And then they fit different, uh, different uh, parametric distribution. Uh, in this case, they use a viable distribution, the gamma, log normal, and the normal distribution. So you can see from the four plots that the shape can be very different. Top left corner, at, it's one extreme. The branch is very short. And uh, the distribution is exponential-like. 
and the bottom right corner, we've got something like a long branch, and it looks very much normal. So you can see that the different distributions, uh, parametric distribution, fit differently depending on the on the branch. Uh, usually, the normal distribution doesn't work very well, especially for very short branches. But that makes sense because the normal distribution, the support of the normal distribution, is the real line. And all the other distribution, variable gamma and log normal, it's uh, non-negative uh, lack of branches. So the take home, uh, so from here we can see that the gamma distribution is uh, usually the best uh, distribution. Uh, it fits best to the branch length distribution. OK, so that's for the Abera paper. And then we've got the likelihood curve fit. So that's from uh, Clearwell and Eric, too. In this case, um, we're fitting a simpler distribution to the branch length distribution. In this case, it's a symmetric binary model. Uh, you've got the equation here. There's four parameters, constant sites, mutation, mutated sites, rate, and truncation. Uh, so the criterion here, we want to optimize. Uh, we optimize it using nonlinear least squares. So we fit the simpler the surrogate distribution to the branch length distribution using least square nonlinear least square optimization. We want to be able to sample from it. So in this case, we can use rejection sampling, and we've used this kind of a uh, of surrogate uh, distribution uh, in a SMC sampler. And the uh, the efficiency of the sampler was uh, was improved, uh, and we've got a paper about this. So the same kind of plots like before. We've got um, the histogram is still MCMC, and then we've got different curves. So we've got gamma and vibul still, but we also have LC fit. On the left, we can see that the LC fit works very well, and unfortunately, on the right, it, it doesn't work so well. But that's a common problem. Even for the gamma distribution for short branches, it's very hard to fit anything. So to summarize, LC fit and the important sampler only approximate one branch length at a time. And in the case of uh, the important sampler, we, uh, we're still approximating within an MCMC. I remember I was saying that MCMC have, don't scale too well for a large, very large data set. So the questions are, can we generalize this type of approach to jointly approximate every parameter? So not just the branches, but we also have substitution rates, GTR, um, we've got the coalesce, and there's many more parameters. But can we do everything at the same time? And also, can we also bypass the MCMC step? Uh, because we want to be fast, but hopefully also very accurate. So this is going to lead to uh, to variation on fronts at some point. So a little bit of um, uh, definitions here. Uh, we work on a probabilistic model, and this is the joint distribution of the latent variables z and the uh, and the observed variables x. And uh, so we don't know z, but we want to infer z through the posterior. So that's just the Bayes rule. But the big problem here. Uh, Usually, we can't calculate this because uh, the normalizing, normalizing constant, uh, the evidence of the marginal likelihood, cannot be uh, is not tractable. So we need to use uh, approximate posterior inference, and uh, usually that's uh, done using MCMC. So now, finally, variational inference. So the problem is the idea is quite simple. We want to minimize the callback liable divergence from a variational distribution Q to the posterior distribution P. Uh, Q is parametrized with some parameters, phi. Um, if we minimize the scale divergence, we get phi star. And uh, the variational distribution parametrized with this phi star is going to be the approximation of the posterior. So it, it looks quite simple. The idea looks quite simple. But we also have a problem here. We need to have the, we need to calculate the posterior distribution. So um, this approximate posterior inference is reframed as an optimization problem, not a sampling problem like in, in CMC. So 
So we don't know the posterior distribution, but that's not a problem. Uh, if we look at the definition of the KL divergence, uh, we've got two expectations. Uh, the first one is the entropy minus the entropy, and then the other one, the cross entropy. Uh, so this is with the posterior. So if we expand the second term, the second expectation, now the expectation is in, with respect to the log joint distribution. And we have another term, which is the log of the evidence. Uh, as you can see, the, the evidence is constant with respect to the variational difference. So this is nice because we can now ignore this term. So we can change the, the objective function, which was the KL divergence. And now we can, instead of minimizing the KL divergence, we can maximize what is called the evidence lower bound. The evidence lower bound is just the negative of the callback libel divergence plus the log marginal likelihood. And uh, something nice about the elbow, uh, the evidence lower bound, is that it's the lower bound of the, of the evidence. And this can be shown uh, using, uh, using the Jensen equality. So, for, for, so it's an optimization problem, and now we want to maximize the elbow, not minimize the KL divergence. So I've been talking about the KL divergence uh, from Q to P. But that's not the only divergence measure we can use in, uh, in variational inference. Uh, we can have the opposite. We can have the KL divergence from P to Q. Uh, unfortunately, it's a bit harder to, to maximize, to minimize, because now the expectation is with respect to the posterior distribution. But there are some algorithms that can do this. There's another measure, another interesting measure. It's the chi divergence from P to Q. And in this case, we can get an upper bound of the model evidence. For KL, it's the lower bound. But in this case, it's the upper bound. So you can get some kind of sandwich estimate of your marginal likelihood. Another interesting one is the Rennie alpha divergence. And depending on the value of the alpha, we can get either a lower or upper bound. Uh, there are other ones, like F divergence, a bit more general, and the Stein's uh, discrepancy. But I'm not. Is there, I mean, are there some reasons why we would <clears throat> prefer, I mean, obviously the KL, the first KL is sort of the right KL, right? Yeah, P to Q. Yeah, but what about, I mean, what are some of the advertised mm, advantages of some of these other divergences? Of the, of, of the chi, for example, chi divergence? Yeah. Well, it's a different one, and it's giving you an upper bound instead of a lower bound. Right. But usually it's the KL that people use from Q to P because it's easier. Cool. So, so, so far, we have derived an objective function, which is the elbow from the KL divergence. Uh, now we need to specify a variational difference. So this is the Q. So the most commonly used uh, variational distribution is probably the mean field uh, variational distribution. So in this case, it's a Gaussian one. And uh, the latent variables are independent. And each latent variable, Z sub i, is governed by its own Gaussian distribution. So, so they're independent. So it's just the product of. Uh, of uh, univariate Gaussian distributions. So they don't have to be Gaussian. They can also be, uh, it can be also a gamma distribution. So the product of gamma distributions. It can be log normal distributions, uh, can be other distributions. And in, in, in our case, the gamma distribution seems to be a good choice for uh, modeling, uh, for estimating branches. Uh, so they, they're independent, but you might, in the mean field, they're independent by definition, but you might be missing some uh, correlation between uh, different variables. So there's another one called the Fuhrman Gaussian, which where the latent variable are not independent. And now you have a multivariate normal distribution with a full covariance matrix. 
But usually the mean field is what we use. So we so we've got the variational distribution, we've got the objective function, the elbow. And uh, from calculus of variations, the optimal distribution of Q for each factors uh, in terms of the distribution minimizing the cap divergence is this equation. Um, so inside the expectation, we've got uh, the the complete uh, the complete con conditional distribution of uh, Z sub uh, J, and it's conditioned on the on X, the observed observed variables. And every uh, latent variable except um, the, the jth one. And the ex expectation is with respect to the variational distribution of a z. Uh, and the algorithm is quite simple. It's just a coordinate ascent. ascent and uh, you iteratively optimize each factor of the mean field variational distribution while holding the other fixed. So it's very similar to, the, to Gibbs sampling. Uh, where you also need to have the complete condition, conditional distribution, except that in variational inference, you take the log and the expectation. So that's one of the oldest algorithms, and it's called coordinate ascent variational inference. Uh, the problem with this kind of algorithm is that you need to have conditional distribution that have a convenient form, because you need to have a complete conditional distribution. And the optimization is just carried out using closed form coordinate ascents. A more recent algorithm is the stochastic variational inference, SVI, uh, but it's restricted to conditionally conjugate models. And it combines natural gradients and the stochastic op optimization. Um, a, a very different way of doing it is to, to do variational inference, is to use black box variational inference. So in this case, you need to calculate the gradient of probability models. And to calculate the gradient, the, they are using the score function. And then the latest one is the automatic differentiation variational inference, ADVI. And I'm going to talk about this one a lot today. This one also requires calculating gradients of uh, probability models. And uh, instead of the score function, it's using the reparameterization trick to calculate the gradients. And I'm going to talk about this also later. So ADVI, Automatic Differentiation Variation Inference, uh, it's, it's, it's using stochastic gradient ascent to optimize the elbow. So like I said, you also need to calculate the, the gradients. Um, and to for the optimization, you need to transform uh, the, the constrained variables. So for example, branch length are non-negative, the nucleotide frequencies some half to some to one. Uh, the substitution rate is also non-negative. I mean, almost every variable in a phylogenetic model is uh, is somehow constrained. Okay, so now the uh, the gradient of the elbow that's uh, the missing piece piece uh, to to optimize. So that's just the the definition of the of the gradient here of the elbow. Uh, if we um, reorder the equation, now we get on the right uh, the, the entropy. And on the left, we, had, um, we have the, the cross entropy. The gradient of the entropy is quite easy to calculate because it's, it's tractable. But the, um, the gradient of the cross entropy term on the left is untractable. So we, we need to find a way to um, to, to calculate this uh, this term, and here comes the reparameterization trick. Uh, so the goal is to express the variable z as an invertible function of another set of variables, uh, epsilon. So with the function t, you go from epsilon to z, and if you take the inverse function, you go from z to uh, to epsilon. So now we've got um, the, so we start with the gradient of the cross entropy term. So if we reparameterize the, the z variable and we we, opt, we get an um, epsilon that is uh, uh, independent of the variational parameters. 
So in this case, we can move the, the gradient inside the expectation. And because we've got this reparameterization, we need to take this into account. So that's just the chain rule. And that's why we've got the gradient of, uh, of the function t. And now that epsilon is independent of the, um, of the variational parameters, we can calculate easily this, um, this expectation using Monte Carlo. So you just uh, draw n samples from uh, the Q distribution, and then you just average it. So that's just standard uh, Monte Carlo estimation. So for example, if Z is normally distribution with parameter mu and sigma, we can use this function, the, we can reparameterize um, Z uh, using, the, uh, using this function. So now epsilon is just a standard normal distribution, and uh, we can move from epsilon to Z uh, using this transformation. So now we've got everything. We've got the objective function, the elbow. We know how to calculate gradients, and we have defined uh, a variational uh, distribution. So that's the algorithm of the, of the ADVI uh, method. So in input, you've got your data, uh, x. You've got your model, the joint distribution of x and, and z, your latent variables. And you have a mean field distribution. So in this case, it's a mean field Gaussian distribution. So we've got uh, mu and sigma parameters. Uh, and these parameters are the, the parameters you want to optimize. So that's the output. So that's stochastic. This algorithm is stochastic gradient ascent. So you just initialize your your variational parameters. It can be a, at random, or or, or, you, or, you, or you can have some good starting values. So in this algorithm, you are going to loop uh, through these steps. So first, you draw from uh, your standard unit distribution your, uh, some epsilons, and then from epsilon, you transform them into your z variables. And, and now you can uh, approximate uh, the gradient of your parameters, mu and sigma, using the simple Monte Carlo uh, method. Uh, that's gradient ascent, so you need a step size. So you just calculate this step size. And then finally, using the step size, your current um, variational distribution and the gradient, you update, uh, you, you update your variational parameters. And you do all these steps many, many times until it converges. Uh, the convergence, there's different methods to, to check for convergence, convergence, but it's not, it's not an easy, it's not an easy task. So what about variational inference software? There, there's quite a few now. Uh, variational inference is getting popular. Uh, usually, well, it requires calculating derivatives. And usually, this is done using automatic differentiation. So it's you don't have to calculate the gradient by hand. So Stan is one of them. Uh, it's a popular package. It, it's not restricted to variation inference. You can also do Hamiltonian Monte Carlo, and also an extension of the HMC is the no U-turn uh, sampler. So you can do variation inference, but you can also MCMC style inference. And there are many other packages, uh, including Edward, BasePy, PyMC3, Pyro. And Pyro is developed by, uh, by Uber. So it's, it's very, very popular now. So sorry, just going back to the um, automation, automatic differentiation variational inference, I mean, really, most of what was in that slide was just gradient ascent, and the automatic differentiation part is really just calculating those gradients, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. The derivative of the log likelihood with respect to the, to the latent variables, and yeah. The whole point is, like, as long as you can use automatic differentiation to calculate the gradient, then you can just do gradient ascent. Yeah, yeah. And I guess, yeah, maybe just say one, one sentence about automatic differentiation for people who aren't familiar with it. Um, a quick sentence about this. <laughs> 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 well, 
Well, it's just sort of, I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's a computer algorithm for calculating derivatives for, for compositions of functions that sort of automate the chain rule, I guess. Is... Yeah, 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 that's it. But not every function is easily automatically differentiated. Okay. Cool. Uh, I, I think I'll talk about this a bit later. Okay, thanks. So today I'm going to talk a, a lot about STAN because we have implemented a program to do variational inference using STAN. So if you don't know, don't know STAN, it's it's quite simple. Well, in this example, it's very simple. Uh, that's how you de you define your model on the right. So you've got your data, you've got n observations, uh, uh, your random variable is x, and uh, it's a Poisson distributed. And uh, there's a, a prior on the theta parameter, which is, uh, I guess, the rate of the Poisson distribution. So in this case, it's not a conjugate prior, so we can't calculate the Poisson distribution analytically. Uh, so that's it. You just specify this, you compile it, you give it some data, and it's going to do uh, variational inference, or so HMC, or the nuts algorithm. So it's, it's, it's pretty nice. But that's not phylogenetic, so we don't care too much about this example. Um, so this is an implementation of the juice candor model in STAN. So the, you have to define the data. So for example, you get the size of the alignment, the number of taxa, uh, the partial likelihood at the tips. So it's either one or zero, depending if it's a ACTG. And also, you have to give the order, the, the peeling algorithm order uh, to calculate the likelihood. So the parameters in this case, is very, there's uh, only the branches, because it's the JC, the juke scanner model. And then you, put, you just use um, an exponential prior on the branch length, for example. And then finally, you just calculate the probability matrices. And then you calculate the, the tree likelihood. So you may notice here that I, well, maybe it's not easy to see, but I don't do any derivative. I don't calculate any derivatives. Um, Stan is going to, from this definition of the likelihood, is going to um, to calculate the gradient of the log likelihood. Um, yeah. So that's pretty nice. You just provide the true likelihood calculation, and from uh, automatic differentiation, is going to get the gradient right using the chain rule and everything. So there has been some work already on variational inference in the phylogenetic world. Uh, maybe I'm missing one or two papers, but the most important one, ones for me and for the next two follow seminars are these ones. So the first one is um, is from uh, Chang, Zhang, and uh, Eric Matson, and um, in this paper they describe a general framework for tree probability estimation given a collection of trees. So it's not looking at the branches as far as, as, far as I understand and not no substitute model, it's just estimating the topology uh, probability, tree, top, uh, tree probability. And he's probably going to talk about this next time. Uh, uh, in the next paper, we evaluated how good is variational inference for estimating the marginal likelihood of tree topology. Uh, so I'm going to talk, some of my results will be based on this, uh, on, on this paper. And then uh, um, publication number three, uh, it's also from uh, Eric and Chang, and they combined the subsplit uh, Bayesian networks that they proposed in the first um, paper, and also they extended to, so they have also different um, phylogenetic models like the Jukes scanner model and branches. Uh, the fourth paper, uh, it's, 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 the model is very different, but it's, it, and it's using stochastic variational inference. That's one of the algorithms. Uh, and uh, Tang Dang is going to talk about it, uh, not in the next file seminar, but the, the one after. And so finally, the in the last paper, we, uh, uh, we implemented the, uh, a lot, a lot of different models in uh, in Stan. So it's a Python script that runs Stan, 
and we've got many, many, uh, many models. So it's not JC, just JC69, it's uh, GTR and uh, other things. Okay, so the rest of this talk is going to focus on these two papers, number two and five. And um, so for, the, for these two papers, uh, we have two different implementation for variational inference. So the first one is Fisher, it's a C implementation. Yeah, it does a lot of things. It can do variational inference, MCMC, maximum likelihood. Uh, in the case of variational inference, uh, we're restricted to a fixed topology. Uh, the gradients are calculated manually, so it's not as flexible as TAN, where it's using auto differentiation. So you can code whatever you want, and it's going to differentiate it. Uh, but as you will see, it's uh, more efficient than STAN. Uh, for the phylogenetic problems, at least. And that's what we use in the night chain dubious ways to compute the marginal likelihood of a phylogenetic tree. The next program that we have is Phylostan. That's, um, that's the latest one. So it's just a Python script it's going, that generates stand script. And uh, we have implemented a lot of different models. But again, it's, uh, it's uh, restricted to a fixed topology. So it's nucleotide subject model. We've got JC69, HKY, GTR. We also have bright heterogeneity across sites uh, using a discretized viable distribution, <coughs> uh, viable distribution and general discrete dis distribution. Uh, in this case, um, we are now using the gamma distribution, uh, which is what people use, because the because TAN doesn't allow doesn't doesn't differentiate inverse CDF, uh, inverse cumulative distributions. So the wavelet is, is nice because there's a, it can, it can be done analytically. There's a nice form for that. So we can have trees without clock uh, and with a uniform prior on topologies, but also more, it's more interesting. We also can do time trees with homochronous and heterochronous sequences. Uh, in this case, for time trees, there's a, a little bit more work because we need to reparameterize the node ages. So the parent is always older than the, than its descendants. Um, so for time trees, we've got different time clocks, strict, autocorrelated, and uncorrelated. In this case, it's just a, a log normal hierarchical prior. And we also implemented some uh, coalescent models, including the constant population size, the sky ride, and the sky grid. So we have a paper under review for this uh, Phylostan for this Phylostan tool. Okay, um, now some results. Um, so I'm going to start with a very simple example. Uh, for this example, I used the, what people usually call D, the DS1 data set. Uh, it's 27 sequences um, of length 1,949. Uh, since we work on fixed topologies, um, I need a, I need a topology. And in this case, it's the highest the tree with the highest posterior distribution. Uh, that's from an MCMC. The model is very simple. It's the simplest possible. It's unrooted, so no clock, and uh, it's using the JC69 substitution model. For the variational distribution, uh, I just use the mean field uh, normal distribution. And uh, I use the Fisher program, so the C implementation. All right, so in, in, in this plot, we've got um, 27 sequences, so 51 plots. Uh, and because we've got, it's uh, one distribution per per branch. So the name don't, don't matter too much. What I would just want to show is that uh, the approximation of the variational inference in green closely matched the, the, inf the, the approximation from MCMC in red. So it's, it's, it's good because they, they, they overlap nicely. Uh, the top left corner is not a branch, it's just this, the sum of branches for MCMC and VB. So, so you can see it works very nicely in, in, in this case. 
But what about more complex models? Um, for, th for this analysis, it's going to be 69 uh, through viruses. It's, it's nucleotides again. And these viruses were isolated between 1981 and 1998. So it's a clock tree with the heterochronous uh, data. So the model is a bit more, compli more complicated than before. Uh, we've got a, st a straight clock, HKY substitution model. Um, we use the coalescent, constant coalescent prior on the, on the genealogy. And uh, we use a viable distribution with four categories to, to take rated originality across sites into account. So we need to choose the variational distribution. We try both uh, mean field and full rank uh, normal. And for this analysis, I used, we used the Phytostan and uh, BIS2. Okay, so on the left, we've got the mean field and on the right for rank. Um, these plots represent the parameters of interest. Uh, so top left, we've got the, the substitution rate and then frequencies, ACTG, and then the kappa parameter of the HKY model. We've got the pop side, population size of the constant uh, coalescent prior. We've got the shape of the viable distribution and then the, the tree height. So that's the age of the, of the root. So in gray, we've got a histogram. The histogram represents the approximation using MCMC. And in, in blue, we've got the, the variational approximation. Uh, so there, there are 10 blue lines per plot. That's because we, didn't, we did 10 replicates. And also there's a, another line. It's a bit hard to see. It's uh, another curve. That's the red curve. And uh, that's using Phytostan. But instead of variational inference, it's using the NUTS algorithm. So the kind of HMC algorithm. And um, we did this just to check that the implement implementation was right. So you can look at the red line. It's uh, it's hugging nicely the, the histogram. Unfortunately, for the variational inference approximations in blue, you can see that it's not always very close to the histogram. It is, and there's a, a lot of variance, especially for mean field. For the full rank, we've got the same we've got the same kind of uh, layouts. So the histogram MCMC, red, nuts and then blue, the variational distributions. So you can see that they are a little bit more close to each other, the very uh, cross replicates, the approximations, except that in, in two cases, in two replicates, it's kind of uh, missing the whole, missing the whole story like the, and I'm, that's a convergence issue. So it's like MCMC, you need to run it several times sometimes just to be sure that it has converged. Uh, for variational inference, you also need to run it several times to be sure that the convergence was reached. But it's sort of interesting, right? I mean, those two times look like they sort of reached the same local minimum or something like that. Yeah, and um, I, I can't say why. It, it's using different seeds, but somehow it must be a, yeah, a local minimum that can yeah, you can reach very easily. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, but yeah, that's for the clock rate, pop size, and tree height, which are all very correlated. Apparently, it didn't matter for the frequencies and the other parameters. Or maybe if it was run much longer. Uh, but yeah, you never know in advance. <laughs> so that's already a complex model. But we are going to do even, even more complex. So for this analysis, for the next analysis, I'm going to use hepatitis C virus genomes, uh, 63 of them. Uh, they were all isolated in 1993. So that's a very standard data set. It uh, can be found in many papers. Uh, the model we're going to use in this case is a, is a, is a strict clock with a fixed substitution rate. Uh, we're going to use a GTR substitution model the sky right coalescent, and again, the viable distribution for across sites. Uh, the variational distribution, again, we're going to use either the mean field or the full rank normal. 
And in this case, we use Fallerstein again and BIST for the MCMC approximations. So here are the results for the sky ride uh, analysis. So top left, that's BIST. Uh, so we we just consider that's the, the correct answer. Uh, on the index, on, uh, in the top right corner, we've got the the approximation using the NUTS algorithm in STAN. So the confidence intervals are slightly narrower than BEAST, but it's kind of a, it's getting the, the point uh, where it's increasing uh, in recent years. And then bottom left, we've got uh, Fallerstein using a variational, a mean field variational distribution, and then the full rank. So these models apparently, uh, uh, a lot more difficult to to approximate uh, for variational distributions. Uh, both mean field and full rank are getting the point that it's increasing. Uh, you can see that that the mean, the white line, uh, black line, uh, is doing this as the same kind of a trajectory as beast and nuts. But the confidence intervals, uh, credible intervals, are extremely narrow compared to the to beast so that was a bit disappointing but it's a it's a step forward i think uh, we can probably do better uh, later um so for the na for the last results uh, um, we are going to use the elbow to approximate the marginal likelihood of, of tree topologies so we're going to compare the posterior distribution of tree topologies estimated from Mr. Bayes to posterior distribution of topologies estimated using a variational inference. So the first step in, in this uh, analysis was to estimate the posterior distribution of the tree topologies using very long runs of Mr. Bayes, again on, on the DS1 data sets. Uh, very long, I think it was 10 billion, 10 billion uh, iterations. So the way we are, we estimate the tree topology posterior distribution is that we just count the number of times each unique topology is found in the in the sample in the MCMC sample. Uh, in this case, uh, Mr. Bayes uh, found 50, uh, 42 topo unique topologies. And from these 42 top unique topologies, we are going to approximate the marginal likelihood using variational inference. So we want to op optimize, um, maximize the elbow, and we are going to take uh, uh, this value as the marginal likelihood, as an approximation of the marginal likelihood. So in this case, we call it p hat. So now we've got approximate marginal likelihoods. Uh, we want to convert them to uh, posterior probabilities. And that's the last equation. Uh, so it really it's just a matter of normalizing these uh, marginal likelihoods. Because the probability of the trees of the topology is just one in this case. So p hat, that's the, the posterior probability using uh, variational inference. And the p is just uh, from MCMC. And then we're going to plot uh, these posterior distributions and see uh, if they match closely. All right, so for this analysis, I used Fisher, uh, the C implementation, and also Phylostan, uh, which used obviously Stan. Uh, we did uh, 10 replicates for each uh, program. So we've got 20, 20 plots, subplots here. Um, on the x-axis, we've got the sample relative frequency. That's the posterior distribution uh, estimated from Mr. Bayes. And on the y-axis, we've got the approximate posterior probability, which is uh, approximated uh, using uh, variational inference. So the goal is to have a straight line. Uh, so in each plot, we've got how many ideas say? 
Okay, we've got 40, 42 topologies. So in each plot, we've got 42 plots, uh, dots. Um, and these plots are ordered in, uh, by KL divergence of uh, P from P to P hat. And uh, you can see that Fisher is always at the top. And uh, unfortunately, Faustan is always at the bottom. Um, so somehow Fisher is more is more efficient also because it's a lot faster. You can see they are all they all take 1.2 seconds to estimate um, one topology, whereas with a uh, Fadostan it takes more than uh, 300 seconds uh, every time. Um, there are re different reasons why Fisher is more efficient. Is that I I give it good starting values for the variational uh, for the variational parameters, uh, and Fadostan is uh, is just initializing the variational difference at uh, variational parameters at random. So yeah, all these plots, they can they show that from marginal likelihood estimated using variational inference, you can get the posterior probability of the topology. All right, nice. uh, we, I understand that Fadostan is slower, but why is it also a lot noisier? Um, this part, I'm not entirely sure why it's happening. Because uh, um, I think it has to do with the convergence check they, they do. Mine is a little bit less strict. And I think theirs is a, the convergence check triggers way too quickly. Even though I, I changed the tolerance so it can, it's very low, I mean, it's lower. Uh, it's still stopping at some point. Um, okay. I don't know. Maybe it's getting lost in a local optima again, like in uh, one of the data sets before. All right. Um, so in 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 Fadostan, we have implemented a lot of different models. You know, sky line, sky ride, different clocks, uh, different substitute models, um, because it's easy to do it in Stan because because they use automatic differentiation and they've got a nice language. But unfortunately, as we've seen, it's very slow. For for one tree in Fish, I took one second, and in Fadostan, it took uh, uh, three hundred seconds. Uh, we also have in Fadostan. Uh, some convergence issues, especially for complex models. Uh, for the sky ride, you could see that it's it's not doing the right thing, and for the flu data set, also ten of out of, ten out of uh, ten replicates uh, got lost somewhere in the local optimum. Optimum, um, and also all my talk today is about um, using a fixed topology, and th that's a that's a bit of a problem. But Chang next next time is going to address this uh, this issue. Um, the algorithm I presented today are quite simple. The transformations are quite simple. Uh, so maybe there's a better way to approximate the distribution. And a, a promising uh, way of doing it is to use normalizing flows. I'm not going to talk about it, but you can look at the reference. Uh, so it's just going to transform a base uh, distribution using a series of, of transformation. So hope, and hopefully it would fit better to the to the posterior distribution. So that's uh, one thing in the future we would like to do is to use normal normalizing flows. Um, we've seen we've seen that Fisher is more efficient than uh, than Stan uh, for, for different reasons. Uh, uh, in Fisher, I know exactly how the True likelihood is calculated, and I can do it more efficiently compared to Stan. So uh, in, in, we are currently working with Eric and Chang and other people on a, on an efficient library to calculate uh, to do variational inference. So in this case, it's a C++ library uh, with a Python interface. So we've been working for a while on this, and uh, hopefully we will bring some more efficient algorithms. And of course, I was kept talking about fixed topologies, which is a problem. 
And uh, now the goal is to uh, integrate the work I've shown today on different models uh, with the work of Chang and Eric uh, on the subsplit base uh, base networks fr uh, framework. So that's a that would be a big big step forward to have a not fixed topology. Like also estimate the the tr the tree topology at the same time as the other parameters. And that's that's it for my talk. Uh, I've been working with Aaron and, and Eric for, for quite a while now, almost five years, I think. Uh, maybe not three years. Uh, and also, uh, we've had a lot of discussions with um, Alexi, Drummond, uh, Christian, and, uh, and Cheng, who used to work uh, with Eric. So with this team, we work, in this team, we work on the LibSBN uh, project I just talked about. And it's been great to work with these guys. And that's it for me. All right. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, that was a very nice talk. Um, uh, I mean, so I, I hope people will ask questions um, via the YouTube live chat or um, Twitter. Um, <clears throat> so I mean, I guess. The w one thing that you mentioned when you were showing the confidence intervals um, is that you hope that those get better later. And and your hope for that comes from using something like, I don't know, normalizing flows or some more complex. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. But it's and, also, and also, the co convergence is an issue. And maybe if we have. Uh, you know, if we code it ourselves, we know we 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 can we can maybe avoid this kind of a early convergence uh, trigger. Instead, you, we don't have access to what we want. Sometimes it, it's a it's a black box. But at least if we implement it ourselves, maybe we can try to do a little bit better. And also with the normalizing flow, maybe that will that will help. But it's sort of interesting, like, I mean, I think this is what people often say about variational inference is that it underestimates the, like, the spread of the confidence intervals. And is yeah, it by definition, the KL from Q to P is going to have a narrow uh, distribution. That's yeah, so I mean, the question is, like, do we really think normalizing flows will improve that? Do we need to use an alternate, you know, objective function? Like the KL from P to Q. Well, <laughs> that would be nice, but <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. This one is the opposite. The distribution will be wider, apparently. Huh. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, hard to know. Yeah, I mean. Let's see. I mean, I guess if, if I was going to be heckling you, I would say, well, variational approximation, you know, variational stuff is always an approximation. And with MCMC, you have the sort of asymptotic guarantee that if you run it forever, then it will get you the right, the right place. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. So what, what, how are you going to respond to that heckling? <laughs> Well, I've, I've heard this argument before. Um, <laughs> hope for the best. <laughs> what do you think? Well, I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, I think it's the way people run Bayesian phylogenetics now, but it's clear that with less time, with the equivalent amount of time, in some cases, you can get a clearly better approximation using BI. But I mean, I mean, I, I think that there is certainly like a there's quite a reasonable thing behind that, though, which is that the convergence diagnostics are relatively well fleshed out for for MCMC, yeah. um, and I feel like they're a little bit less well understood for variational inference. So yeah, let's see. So there was that recent paper about you know, by Alp Kuhlbecker and company about did it work. 
Oh, yeah, I see which one, yeah. Um, I used it on some of the some of the data sets, some of the analysis. And um, yeah, the criterion was not, uh, according to the criterion, the, some of the analysis failed. But even though the distributions were very close to the MCMC approximations, so I don't know. I, I need more. I need to look at it a bit more closely. Didn't you? Ha didn't some of the reviewer? Didn't they make some suggestions or have some questions or something like that? Yes, on on Twitter they said I should lower the tolerance, uh, which I did already. But then if I low, if it's too low, it never it never stops. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. For example, for the sky ride analysis with VB, it would take uh, one day, I think. And if I lower this, if I lower the tolerance, it's going to take forever. It, it didn't stop really. Okay. Well, um, I don't see any questions, so I guess we'll wrap up. Um, okay. Let me know how it went. Um, with the new broadcasting software, it seems like it did work. Um, Am I the guinea pig? Am I the first one? You are the guinea pig. I mean, I, I had no interest in changing from Hangouts in Air. It's just they, as Google does sometimes, they just shut it down. So <laughs> anyway, thank you, Matthew. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, I guess we'll have um, yeah the next seminar will be on Tuesday, November 12th at 4 p.m. PST. All right, see you then. Cool, see you.